Jennifer establishes investment account to pay for college for her daughter. She plans to invest X at the beginning of each month for the next 21 years. Beginning at the end of the 18th year, she will withdraw 20,000 annually. The final withdrawal at the end of the 21st year will exhaust the account. She anticipates earning an annual effective yield of 8% on the investment calculate X. So this problem is very similar to the one which we did in the previous video, number 79. So let's look at it. Now she's investing at the beginning of each month for the next 21 years. So uh, we need the monthly interest rate first. And once again, the final withdrawal is going to exhaust account. So that means that the present value of the investments at any time equals the present value of the withdrawals at the same time. So uh, let's first calculate the monthly effective interest rate because the deposits are happening monthly. So we again use our formula 9.1, one plus i equals one plus i 12 by 12 over the 12. And even the effective rate over here is the same as it was in problem 79. So it's a very, very similar problem. So similar that I won't be surprised that it's some at some point one of them is just removed, uh, calling it the duplicate of the other. <laughs> so it's the same monthly effective rate, J. And withdrawals completely drain the account. So a value of deposits at any time equals the value of withdrawals at that time. And again, we'll take zero time to be the common time. And deposits happen for 21 years. So we first need to calculate how many months there are in 21 years because the deposits are monthly. So 21 times 12 is 252. And since the deposits happening at the beginning of each month, so it's annuity due. So the present value at time zero of the deposits is again found by 33.3. Substitute J and the present value comes out to be 125.35x. X is unknown. The amount of each deposit is unknown. That's what we have to calculate. And then the withdrawals happen. The only difference, is, the main difference between this and problem 79 is that there the withdrawals were happening at uh, the end, at the beginning of certain years. And there were still four years over there here. They happen at the end of these years. So this makes it even easier because end of year 18 is just time 18. End of year 19 is just time 19. End of year 20 is just year 20. Um, and end of year 21 is just time 21. So remember when it was at the beginning, then the time that it which it happens is one less than the year we are in. So if it was saying that it happens at the beginning of these years, then the beginning of year 18 would actually be times 17 and so on. But here it's happening at the end of these years, the end of any year, uh, something happening at the end of any year means it's happening at time exactly that. So we bring these withdrawal values to time zero. So the withdrawal that happens at time 18 will be pulled back uh, through 18 discount factors. So it'd be 20,000 new 18. And the other one would be 20,000 new 19, 20,000 new 20, 20,000 new 21. We factor out the 20,000 and new is 1.08 to the negative one because the interest rate is 8%. And so we substitute that and we get up 17,903.3. And now we equate the present value of deposits with the present value of the withdrawals. And so we have one. 25.35x equals 17,903.3, and that gives x to be 142.8. That is choice B.